First, many people have heard of the famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright, but have you ever stepped foot in one of his highlighted homes? Before Belinda left for vacation, she got to visit a house that truly shines like no other. This is a great example of a Usonian house. It was coined by Frank Lloyd Wright. So tell us exactly what that means. Well, in the mid-1930s, Frank Lloyd Wright was approached by a young couple and said, can you design a simple home that we can afford? Mm -hmm. And he came up with a concept called Usonian Homes. This is an early example that was uh, designed and built in 1940. Um, and it's a simple house, originally 900 square feet. And it uh, has a lot of innovations, but also has a lot of things that uh, we can do without. It doesn't have a lot of storage space. It doesn't have a lot of decorative trim, but it does have a carport. And a carport was uh, relatively new at that time. Frank Lloyd Wright actually coined the term carport. And now we're inside and the whole feel and look really kind of just takes your breath away. But there's also an amazing efficient use of space. This was the original living room, uh, which also functioned as the dining room and the family room and everything else. And the <laughs> kitchen was originally just here in the corner. The entry was right here. Uh, it was just three boxes originally, two small bedrooms back to the side and then this room. And we really get a sense of nature. You know, how does that all play out? Well, Frank Lloyd Wright called his practice organic architecture. And his goal was to bring nature inside and really uh, unite the dwelling with the surrounding uh, nature beyond it. In this house, you'll see all the windows, the various entries where you can go outside easily from each room. Also, even here in this corner, you'll mm -hmm. see there's, there's, a, there's a planter just outside uh, to two windows here so something can be growing and there's light coming in from every angle even above us with these clever story windows yeah in summertime you wouldn't need to turn on any lights for a really long time probably until seven or eight that's right it's got a great light throughout the day one of the details that i like is how thoughtfully he made the built-in here the bookcase and the shelves in the bookcase are directly tied in uh, to the casing of the window and now we're in one of the bedrooms, and of course we're seeing wood carried through, but there's also something very unique about the floor. The floor is concrete and it contains radiant heating, and it was a way to build a heating system integrated throughout the house, especially for a small space. These little details are a part of an entire vision that, that he had for how, not only how architecture should be made, but also how people should live and how the country should develop. And architecture was kind of a bridge for him to do that. And his legendary homes are must-see venues all over the country. Later on, Belinda gets a look into why he chose such captivating locations and what special bonus came with the house. All right, welcome back to Better Kansas City. This home is definitely an architectural paradise. We join Belinda again to see what Frank Lloyd Wright stopped from ruining his vision. So right now we're standing in the expanded part of the house and that has to be so different for Frank Lloyd Wright or really any architect to come back and later add on. The original house was built in 1940 and he was rehired by the second owner of the house in 1948. He tripled the size, he added a bedroom and also behind us a great room uh, that, that we'll see. Um, he also added a lot of uh, and extended the outdoor space and integrated that into the indoor space. So as an architect, how do you consider the family that's going to live here or just life as a whole? I think Frank Lloyd Wright, rather than considering the family, he considered the family he wanted to have live here and he wanted to design the way that they would live in the house, and including custom furniture. We have the original dining table in this house, as well as a lot of built-in furniture, such as the shelves here, so that the families uh, and his clients wouldn't bring in their own furniture. <laughs> and perhaps get in the way of his vision. He also wanted to go into the smallest details. And what I think is really interesting is even examining the way that the brick was laid. And here you can see the horizontal layers of mortar are inset within the brick, but the vertical layers are raised flush with the brick. And so Wright is accentuating the, the horizontal plane and he's drawing the eye outward. In the same way, the flathead screws, which are used to attach the wall paneling to the framing, are exactly horizontal, and each screw is aligned perfectly with that plane. And when we walk back into the expanded part of the living room, you really see where they keep the light. This room, uh, which was added in 1948 by Frank Lloyd Wright, is surrounded by walls of windows. We were here on a hillside, 
And you can see it's a great view of the surrounding trees. It's really beautiful here in the middle of Kansas City. And you can also see some light peeking in from the top. Yeah, he lowered the ceiling uh, when he lowered the, the, the floor. Uh, and that gave room for these clerestory windows. So you have a layer of light above. Uh, and it's incredible how impactful that is when you're standing here or when you're seated at the dining room tables. So when you're sitting back and relaxing, you can't help but hear the bubbling of the water of this koi pond right outside. Well, when they did the expansion, they also expanded the outdoor spaces. And one of the main things that they did is they created this uh, small garden terrace here. Originally, that was meant to be a plunge pool, a small pool that you can dive into. They realized when they started the planning that it would cost more to make the plunge pool than it cost to originally build the house, which I think was $5,500, mm -hmm. which at that time was actually a considerable amount of money. I don't know if you noticed this, but the wall mm -hmm. that surrounds the koi pond here runs in a circle. And then it runs all the way back here and integrates into the house. It's actually the same brick that becomes the supporting wall for the house. You can see there's a lot of geometry in the house. In the ceiling panels of the cypress, you can see triangles and other shapes starting to appear. Now, Sherry, I don't know about you, and obviously Frank Lloyd Wright, huge architect, name yes. of the architectural world, but I have a feeling like your entire time living there would be spent cleaning windows. Yeah, a lot of cleaning That's windows. That's all that was there. Yeah, all the attention to detail, <laughs> making sure the screws were horizontal yeah. and the brick mortar and everything. Wow. Would you ever live in a place that came with its own furniture that you had to keep there? No. For the... Uh... No. That, I mean, that, it's going to take a special buyer, like yeah. somebody, and in, in, there's buyers out there, but it'd be hard. And a special buyer with the... Yeah, well, yeah which is not me. With that, So there too. you go. <laughs> all right, moving on. And later, the exterior takes center stage, showcasing its unique charm and large landscape. All right, welcome back to Better Kansas City. Architect Frank Lloyd Wright is the leading pioneer when it comes to Usonian structures. You know, I had to Google that word. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't Google it. I just faked my way through it. You did a great <laughs> job. Once he mastered his interior vision, it was time to take the already gorgeous exterior to another level. And with the living room surrounded with doors and glass basically on three sides, we can just walk right out here and be surrounded by nature. Well, in the same way that he wanted to unify the interior spaces, you can see how tied in uh, the exterior spaces are. Uh, each room has doors which comes out. These, This is the original bedrooms, mm -hmm. the two original bedrooms of the house. You can see how they lead directly outside and there's doorways that, that come out. You can see details like the overhanging roofs, which is characteristic of, of right houses. Um, I mean, us can... being surrounded by like an acre and a half of nature, you know, how characteristic was that for Wright? Well, he typically would build houses uh, in nature. They would be uh, built for the sites that they're on and, and built uh, and built within the landscape. So within a hill, uh, if you think about his iconic masterpiece, Falling Water, it's built right into that hill, right above the waterfall, and, th and that's what he was striving to do. This beautiful home goes up for an on-site auction mm -hmm. this afternoon. Last year, it listed on the market for about $1.6 million. Oh. So I know you can't wait to put your bid in. Well, let me, I'm going to have to search that couch for some <laughs> change here afterwards to make sure we can try to get that bid put in and on our behalf. But no, that's a very cool house. Thanks very nice. That.